Well, it's high time for a garden tour, don't you think? I would say right now the garden is pretty much where I consider to be peak. The dahlias have come into bloom. Other things are still hanging on. The containers aren't fully overgrown yet, but they're filled in. Things are pretty good right about now in the garden. And I do have a garden tour coming here. Uh, it's a private garden tour for a private group coming in a week and a half. And so there's a certain amount of fluffing and faffing about that I do when people are coming into the garden that I really don't do any other time. And so the way I accomplish that is by taking each section of the garden individually. And I thought, and by the way, I start closest to the house because I almost never get everything. So I figure people hang out closest to the house usually in these events. So I thought, start there and people will be not as critical as they move away from the house maybe. Anyway, I have finished up this patio bed behind me. This is the original garden that was here. Um, I should say the original space. It has changed. I, I couldn't even count how many times, probably four or five times this whole garden has been redone. But long story short, it's probably looking as good as it's going to look. So I thought I'd better show this to you now. So come along, let's check it out. So I'm going to walk you through plants in detail, which we haven't done for eons here. Um, and we're just going to start in the corner here with the two boxwoods. This big boxwood is a green velvet. It's the first boxwood I ever planted in this garden. It's quite big. I do like to keep it pruned, not a super tight prune, but neatly. And then this is a green gem that I added two years ago. In front of here, I've actually planted some ground covers down in here. Um, there's a variety of little things that I've planted in there. But what happened in front of this is a whole bunch of self-sown annuals popped up and I don't mind them. So this one, which you're going to see popping up everywhere, is Verbena Bampton. And uh, this is a plant that I find to be very hard to start from seed. But if you plant it once, it will sow around your garden and you can easily move the seedlings. So if you can find a plant of it, I recommend just starting with a plant plant it once and then just let it reseed in your garden and then move the seedlings around. I didn't move any of these here. I clearly had it planted last year and they all popped up. I may, we'll see, we'll see how this looks. I may take these out because there are other plants behind them. I'm not sure. And then this is a self-sown Nicotiana that popped up in there. Don't mind that in any way. So in the front border here, I always like to do something that's, um, represents some repetition because things get pretty chaotic behind it so I feel like order in the front is important and uh, I basically did uh, a alternating repeat of Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow, uh, White Bidens, another Euphorbia, Wild Magic Basil. So that's just repeats all along here. Now couple of things of note. First of all, this is Wild Magic Basil. I talk about this plant all the time because it's just one of my go-tos. This is a patented basil and it is basically sterile, so it has to be grown from cuttings, not seeds. You might get the same effect with another purple basil, but this one I grow purely as an ornamental and I allow it to flower because I think the flowers on it are gorgeous and obviously the bees love it. A quick note about the Bidens here. This Bidens is the new Proven Winners uh, Campfire Marshmallow Bidens that is coming out next year, but they only sent me one plant. And I really like Bidens and I really like these sort of cute little daisy-like flowers. So I bought three more, four more to fill in along here. So this is a Danzinger variety. Um, I'll look around for a tag to see if I can find one. but. It's, you know, I just bought this at the hardware store. This is not a new one. So it's, I have an inadvertently set up a little plant trial here. I would say the Proven Winners flowers are just, well, here, let's just pick one and see. Okay, the flower on the left is the Danzinger one and the, um, the flower on the right is the Proven Winners one. Maybe the Proven Winners flowers are just a touch whiter and a touch, no, I don't even think they're whiter, but they might be a touch bigger. But overall, I'm not seeing a lot of difference between these plants at this time. Now the problem when you plant anything in a, in a pattern is that 
it is almost guaranteed that one will die. And I can't believe this has happened right before this tour. But check out this wild magic basil. I have no idea. Everyone else, there are four of them here. The rest of them are just going gangbusters. I don't know what happened here. Um, I do have, ja um, I have Asian jumping worms in this garden. And perhaps they something happened related to that. I cut it back, hoping it could recover. Um, I don't know. I'm going to leave it for a little bit. I'll have to do a last minute fill in before the tour at this point. The other thing of note here is if you recall, last year I planted three Hudson River clematis along here. And they are all growing and they are doing exactly what I hoped they would do. This is a vining variety, or excuse me, like a more of a bush, a non-vining variety, I should say. So you don't need to grow it up a structure, you can let it ramble, which is exactly what I've done here. And it's very subtle, obviously they're new plants, but I'm really happy with how this looks. Here's the other one right here, tucked in there. There's a sedum in there too. And the third one is just, he's just down here, he's a little bit out of flower, but there's some down there. So that sort of makes up the front row. I have also stuck in some ageratum in there, um, just for a little color behind there. There's um, Nicotiana, that might have been one I planted or might have been a self-sown that I just left. But you get the idea of the front border. So behind that we get to a row of waltzing Matilda dahlias. Um, I really like this dahlia, it's got this nice dark foliage. These are the flowers, which are somewhere between coral and red, but I like these single flowers. I think they're really pretty. Here's a little bee or a wasp or some sort of pollinator going at it there. Here's Dorothy. Hi, Doroth. So that is sort of the front row here. Uh, back here, I've got a variety of clematis that grow up um, kind of a round um, trellis type of thing. I think this might be Durandii blooming right now. Um, not a ton of blooms on it at this point. And then behind that, we've got tiny, tough stuff hydrangea, clearly well past its prime. But I do leave the flowers on because I think even as these flowers fade, I think they offer a lot of interest here. I believe there are five of these planted here. And then over here is where I planted um, a whole grouping of Crichton honey dahlias, uh, probably my favorite dahlia, and you can see them. You know, they come in a variety. They all are sort of a color changer. Here's more of a salmony one. This is kind of a I don't know uh, sunset colors. There's a very light yellow one. Uh, they play very well with others. They just barely need staking. I have not yet staked the waltzing Matildas. So far, they're holding themselves up. I hope that continues. The lime green through here is Isla Gold Tansy. It is getting ready to flower. I will probably go in here and start pinching these off because I don't find the flowers to be particularly attractive. I just grow it mostly for the foliage. I do like the, um, there's sort of a color echo that's going on here that I quite like. So we've got the, the lime, the sort of lime green chartreuse color of the Isla Gold Tansy. We've got the uh, lemony lace elderberry in the pot, and then we have the Amsonia hubrechtii, which also has a little bit of that limey color. So you get kind of a triangle of lime-colored plants here that I think helps carry your eye through the space and is kind of restful as well in a, as we've mentioned, a very chaotic space. This uh, sort of silvery foliage plant back here, this is Kinsley's Ghost Honeysuckle, which I just keep twining around itself in a circle so it stays sort of in a lump. It wants to go high. I mean, you could put this on a trellis and this sucker would go high. I just keep, keep wrapping it around itself um, to create sort of this cloud of it. I don't know if that's a that's an effective look or not, but it's what I've been doing for the last few years. I like the plant a lot, um, and it, you know, that's my way of dealing with it. We've got some more of that self-sown verbena 
Bampton along the front here. And then the bright blue here is Cheer Blue Delphinium, which I grow from seed. This is a, um, I think this is either Bronze Queen, might be Bronze Queen, uh, Nicotiana, probably self-sown there, or maybe I put it there, possible. I like it there, it gets to stay. These dahlias are, this is HS Princess, I think. Um, I actually got these, this was a mistake. It was supposed to, I was supposed to get, I think, HS Date, and I got these, and I love them. I mean, you can't go wrong with this HS series because it's got this nice dark foliage, but these single flowers are really pretty, and they're short, so that they don't need staking, which is so nice. Now, just a note on the uh, Limelight Hydrangea. This Limelight Hydrangea is probably been planted here for 15 years. And over the years, it sort of became a three-stem tree. Now, I've been trying to encourage some new growth from the bottom because in order to keep this nice and fresh, at some point I will probably have to cut out one of the, gradually cut out those stems. Um, so I've been trying to encourage this growth from the bottom. So these lower flowers that you see, including these that are kind of flopping over, are from growth that I have been letting come up, new growth from the bottom that will hopefully eventually come up here. These have been propped up a little. I'm gonna to have to come in and sort of prop these up because they don't look like they're connected to the plant. But as you can see, the limelights are just, they're still in their lime color, which is probably my favorite. So the flowers are just starting to develop at this point. There's one uh, Salvia Argentia there. Uh, this is totally tangerine. It's smallish. I don't know. I think we've got some insect situation going on here. Um, I'm just going to kind of baby these plants a little bit. I'm not worried too much about, about what's happening here. I'm not going to go start spraying anything. It doesn't bother me enough to bother with that. Um, we've got some other dahlias here that have yet to bloom, so I can't tell you what those are. This one is labeled here as polka. And that is not polka, so I don't know what that is. This one has all sorts of insect frass on it, so something is going at that. Um, and this is Kelsey Annie Joy, which is kind of a really nice little collarette. This flower is not particularly well formed. Uh, behind here is a Baptisia. I let my Baptisia stand after they flower. I think the foliage is beautiful, and I let the seed pods hang there. This is uh, a Thelictrum. You probably can barely see it because it's so airy and beautiful. I believe this is, um, I'm not gonna guess. I'm gonna have to put it in the description here because I'm not sure what it is. But I've got another one back there. This one's quite tall. I actually ended up staking it yesterday. So I redid this portion of the garden this year. Um, not a lot, I just kind of rearranged some things and added a few things. Uh, it's still lacking a little. I'm probably going to pop in a few annuals here before this garden tour. But the main plants that we have here are, um, this is Heuchera Autumn Bride, which you can see is starting to be flowers late. So that's kind of quite nice for Heuchera, unlike others. This is uh, the first GMs I've ever grown other than the native one. This is um, Mai Tai. And uh, actually really nice, pretty foliage on there. Um, I was hoping I might get a second bloom out of them, but no such luck. I just planted them this year. This Carex is called Beetlemania, which I think is funny. And then I also planted in here Carex. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to put the name of this one on there too. Some new Carex in here as well. Those have not really plumped up much. It's been such a dry year and it's hard to keep the appropriate amount of water on everything. So probably these plants would be looking a little bit better if I had gotten a little bit more water on them. Uh, and then we do have some European ginger mixed through here. Some doing better at the ones that are getting more water and more shade better than others. Um, I do need to plant something to fill in this little hole um, on this uh, boxwood, which was caused by Odin uh, going to the bathroom on it because he would sneak in there. These hostas are elegans. 
Uh, interesting to note that these smaller ones in the middle were one, I believe, or two that we divided last year. So it's taken them a long time to bounce back, far longer than I thought after division. You can tell the difference in size between the ones we divided and the ones we didn't divide. Oh, and the um, this autumn, this is just a, this is just a native service berry. Uh, this is really becoming really scary for us because it's just not doing well. Um, this is a plant that we, this was the first tree we ever planted in our yard. It was a gift from my mother-in-law and uh, it has struggled. And it has been dealing with um, cedar apple rust, which we really can't treat this tree for ourselves because in order to treat for cedar apple rust, you have to spray the entire tree. And this tree is easily 20 feet tall, probably 25 feet tall. But the leaf, it's just, you know, we lose leaves on it. I fear that the problem is the way it was planted and it's catching up with those. This was the first tree we ever planted. And we did not remove the cage or the bottom of the burlap on it. We did remove the top of the burlap, but we didn't remove the rest of it. That was the advice to plant trees at the time. And I fear it might be struggling with that now. We are gonna do whatever we can to save this tree because it's really special to us and important to us, but it's it's struggling. Uh, there is a clematis that grows up. It's grave tie beauty. You can see it kind of flopped there. Uh, it will make its way through the branches. It will bloom uh, red flowers very late in the season. You don't get to see the back side of this flower bed very often because I just don't show you this very often. But this year I added in some, uh, I say Agastache, you say whatever you want, Blue Fortune. It's the only one I can get to grow well for me. And I'm happy I did that. I think it's a nice, um, nice vertical accent here. You can see the bees just go nuts for this. And then we've got a variety of dahlias that have not started blooming in front of it. Um, we've got some sanguisorba in here. I think this is called Plum Drops. It's new this year. We also have a beautiful persicaria called Orange Fields that is not looking too beautiful because can you see the Japanese beetle? Turns out, of all the plants in my yard, this is their favorite target, this persicaria. So I may go through and pick off the skeletonized leaves before the tour. We're going to see. I'm not going to bother now because I just keep picking... There's another one there. I just keep picking the Japanese beetles off of this. They're just really making it look wretched, but the flowers are pretty on it. This is a, um, I don't know what Dahlia that is, but it's pretty. And then we've got Melena Fleur in there, which is a really good grower as well. So this is sort of what the backside looks over here. Again, a couple little holes here that I might pop in. I just cut back these ladies mantle in here. So they will flush out really quickly. So I suspect these will be much bigger and fill in quickly. Here's the backside of the, uh, of the urn planting. I keep going in here um, and trying to sort of deadhead the, the uh, superbenas because I just think they look wretched, especially white flowers. They just do not look good when they get, when they get tattered like that. Um, what I will say is I am shocked by the amount of water that this container is requiring. That elderberry wants some water. So, so I'm watering this container pretty much every day, which is more than I would usually have to water it. The angelonia is letting me down just a little bit in it. I thought it would be doing a little bit better. Otherwise, pretty happy with how that container's going. This is a viburnum. I believe this is a Shoshani here, or maybe, no, it's not. Cupcake? I'm sorry, my names are not coming to me. Anyways, it's a, a placatum type um, viburnum that stays low. I always like it back here. Uh, we do have a, a lot of people have been mentioning to me that I should have planted purple smoke bush. We have one, it's right here. I generally, it doesn't grow a ton. I like to keep it short anyway, and I don't care for the flowers on these, so I never let it flower. Um, we have some, uh, this is black stockings thelictrum back here, and it's clearly done flowering, but this year the foliage still looks good. Sometimes the foliage looks absolutely terrible, so I cut it all the way back to the ground and let it just 
uh, get new foliage on it. But this year I think it looks pretty good. So, so far I've let it stand. The flowers, I just leave these flowers. They're clearly spent, but I don't think they're unattractive. Got some more sanguisorba in here that is getting ready to bloom. This is that same persicaria as over there, orange field. Um, here's some, here's some Japanese beetles mating. So that's, that's great. <laughs> but, oh God, here's like a, look at this. Jeez Louise guys, get a room. Anyway, uh, so the, like I said, the Japanese beetles for whatever reason are really liking the persicaria. We've got some more, you know, I like these, I think this is summer beauty allium. I like these alliums, not just for their flowers, but I really like the strappy foliage of these. I think they're very pretty. Another Agastache Blue Fortune, that's from last year. Another one of these Persicarias, which is smaller than the others. Uh, one, one lone uh, Calamantha Montrose White back here. And uh, there were some lilies here. I've cut those back because those are done, done blooming. So let's just take a quick look, quick closer look at the urn, see what we think about that this year. So first of all, I'm so happy that I can see the pot this year. I think it's a much cleaner look than when I've planted really big trailers in the past and it just kind of blends in with the garden. I also planted shorter growing dahlias around it so that they wouldn't get quite as tall. Um, the Elder elderberry has gone kind of Susian, which I don't dislike. I think that's kind of nice. This white superbina is really big and quite um, vigorous. So I've been cutting that back quite a bit actually just to sort of keep it in check. So overall, pretty happy. Like I said, I had expected that Angelonia to be a little bit more upright um, and maybe we can get that to happen still. It's still healthy in there, but that's the situation with that. Okay, that is the first of what I think will be many garden tours of different sections of the garden. You know, I rarely have the opportunity to walk you through individual plants in the garden, and I think it can be helpful if you're interested in seeing what things are uh, as we move along. So stay tuned for more garden tours. If you liked it, hit like and subscribe and do all the things that help so much on YouTube. I appreciate your support. Have a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow on golden. Springs, rainbow trout and hummingbird.